Hello, everyone. All right. Hello. Yes. Woo. This is awesome. Uh, all right. Today, we'd like to share with you our learnings for designing audio experiences for AI glasses. It worked. My name is Paul. Uh, I'm a senior interaction designer on the Android developer team. And I'm Emma, a UX researcher on Android XR. Today, we introduced Android XR SDK Developer Preview 3. Uh, the Android XR SDK enables you to create your own bespoke in-app experiences uh, to run on the AI glasses. Hmm. There we go. You can build both audio-only experiences uh, for the AI glasses or audio and display experiences for the AI glasses with a display. In both cases, it's important that you design your audio experience first, um, making sure that those interactions feel natural. Today, we'll help you get started. I'll begin with a quick overview of the AI Glasses cap capabilities, then Emma will share some of the design considerations for audio interactions that we found through our research. Then I'll be back to show some of these considerations in action. Uh, I'll share some user problems that we've uh, seen and some possible solutions to those problems. And of course, we'll finish with some time for questions. Okay, but first let's talk about the unique capabilities of the AI Glasses form factor. Look at that thing. Uh, the device contains both microphones and speakers, unlocking both input and output. Uh, the camera gives you, oh wait, there we go. The camera gives you the opportunity to enhance the, uh, the experiences with a point of view image capture or a video stream. Uh, the VPS and IMU provide real-time geospatial and positioning information. Uh, as for physical input, the glasses provide a camera button, a touchpad, and a display button like we've talked about. Uh, when running your app experiences on the glasses, you can respond to a double press on the camera button and to the input events coming from the touchpad. Uh, so for more information on that, uh, watch the app model on AI glasses uh, talk. Uh, now that we know the technical capabilities, I'll hand it off to Emma to share some design considerations for audio experiences on AI glasses. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. My team and I have been researching glasses for several years now, and we've come up with some important considerations that I'd like to share with you today. So first, how do you even design a user interface when there's no screen? Our research has identified a significant confidence gap specific to audio experiences on glasses. Users really value being hands-free, but they report that audio experiences are often too ambiguous, lack the right level of detail, or overwhelm them with information that's difficult to digest. One way to address this in the design process is to design the audio experience first and aim to reduce ambiguity between the user and your app. When designing audio experiences for glasses, it's helpful to remember to design for user comfort. Remember that glasses users will be focusing on the real world around them while at the same time focusing on your application. And because glasses sit in the most prominent place on a user's face, it's easier for users to get overwhelmed by glasses experiences. This is why it's important that we make sure that glasses experiences are not only useful, but also comfortable. And when we say comfort, we're not just talking about physical fit. Our research has identified four additional core comfort dimensions that are critical for adoption. First, design for sensory comfort. This means ensuring the experience feels quiet and pleasant to use. Try to avoid overwhelming the user's senses and ensure that the user does not experience sensory claustrophobia. You can do this by calibrating sounds and haptics to be non-distracting. For example, instead of having multiple ear cons in quick succession, suppressing or bundling alerts within a certain time frame could be less overwhelming for the user. Design also for cognitive comfort. This means minimizing the mental effort that's required to use your experience. Lean into users' existing mental models and keep interactions natural. You should also try to keep your content lightweight. As a rule of thumb, the information that users receive should be purposeful, clear, and succinct. For example, competing audio streams coming from glasses and the environment can be fatiguing and distracting. 
So keep audio brief and to the point so that users can focus on what's in front of them. Next, remember to also design for social comfort. This means helping users feel comfortable using your application in different contexts, including when they're out in the world around other people. It's important to design not only for the wearer's comfort, but also to design for the bystander's comfort. For example, rather than having your app use the camera for continual visual input for something like navigation, um, consider having the app only use the camera as needed so as not to disrupt bystanders. Lastly, design for comfort with AI. Users are more comfortable with an AI experience when they trust it, and you can increase trust by making your experiences more helpful and reliable. Additionally, consider how you can make experiences pleasant to use by adjusting things like tone and personality. And most importantly, always make sure that users can easily guide, correct, or override an AI experience as needed. For example, have AI ask for permission to turn a camera on in an experience and notify the user when it has turned it off. Now that we've covered some of the core considerations for designing for glasses, Paul is going to show you some examples of these considerations in action. Yes, uh, so a disclaimer. Some of these I'm showing are still in the design concept phase. Uh, some of these uh, examples are based on real working code uh, from our sample app, so it's kind of a mixture. All right, let's get started. First, let's discuss what happens when your app loads on AI glasses. Without a screen, uh, or if the screen is off, it, there could be an awkward silence users might feel when they start a voice experience on AI glasses. They're left wondering, uh, is it working? Did it even launch? This confidence gap uh, creates user anxiety because there's no screen to confirm what's happening. So the simple solution is to greet your user. Uh... Hi, how can I help with your list? I can add, remove, or complete items. Okay, let's see what I need to add to my list. This simple greeting increases cognitive comfort and trust in AI by immediately answering that question, is this thing working? Uh, helping to overcome that confidence gap. Um, this also sets the proper expectation if your app includes a conversational AI interface or what we call an agent. Uh, all right, next, let's discuss camera usage. Uh, Using the camera constantly in public can affect everyone's social comfort, both for the wearer and the bystanders. Users want to safeguard their own privacy and that of others, so uh, give users control with the camera button. Put the user in charge of when the camera is active by assigning the camera double press button to either capture a photo or toggle on, on and off the camera. Which of those you choose depends on your use case. Um, Let's take a look at both options in the same scenario. In this first example, first example uh, we're showing a version of the app where we share a photo with the in-app AI agent. Let's take a look. Can you add this to my list, please? Added book travel and three other items to your list. Awesome. Uh, can you also add buy a gift for my son? Added, buy a gift for my son. Ta -da. Uh, oh yeah, and then this next one, it's toggling. Okay, let's turn on video. I can see what you see. Okay, let's see. Oh, we're getting low on this. Can you add this to my list, please? Added coffee to the list. Uh, only one more coffee filter left. Uh, add this to my list, too. Added coffee filters. Thank you. All right, great, let's turn that off. Camera pause. So in that second example, we were toggling the camera on and off via the camera pr double press button. So doing that, you, putting the user in control of the camera helps them be more comfortable with AI and in so social situations. Next, let's discuss focus and distraction. Uh, let's say your users are focused in, on your app, but then a dog runs into their path or someone calls their name. The ongoing audio from the glasses is now a distraction and can lead to cognitive overload. 
So provide a quick, frictionless way for users to switch attention between your app and the real world without losing their place, especially for conversational or streaming audio. OK, add this to my list. It's getting low. I've added more than iodized salt to your list. Paused. Oh, Dash. Oh, did you want me to throw this for you? OK. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I can hear you now. And actually, take pepper off my list. We have a lot of it. Thank you. Black pepper removed. So in this case, it was my dog. That was the thing in my environment I needed to attend to. Uh, you'll notice that tapping, uh, in this case, pauses the agent in this app. OK, now on providing clarity. Vague, ambiguous audio signals like generic chimes or beeps can be hard to distinguish and remember. On the other hand, too much verbal feedback can be overwhelming. So be verbal but digestible. Uh, use clear, concise verbal confirmation instead of, or, or in addition to, uh, nonverbal audio feedback. Readouts uh, must be short and purposeful to prevent cognitive and sensory overload. Let's take a look at the next example. Finish walk. Go back again to confirm. Walk ended. You really moved. You walked 8.9 miles in 2 hours and 21 minutes. Hold on. So we recommend reading out short confirmation messages when tapping or swiping in your app. The right balance of verbosity uh, can lead to sensory and cognitive comfort. A confirmation step before ending irreversible actions can also help. Finally, let's discuss how longer duration experiences can be treated. When using an ongoing experience like a fitness tracker or navigation, long periods of silence can make users anxious. They worry the app has crashed or stopped working, uh, a, clear lack of, or a, <laughs> a lack of a clear sign of life. Uh, so provide status with a simple tap. This matches the display glasses pattern where pressing the touchpad wakes the display. 1.2 miles walked in 32 minutes, 15 minute mile pace. So providing this status when the user taps helps increase cognitive comfort. And we've built this into the system uh, for our AA glasses with a display. As you'll see next, tapping the touchpad turns the display on and shows the current activity. So it's showing the same uh, information, but provi provided visually rather than audibly. Here we go. Back All to right. Emma. Uh, those are our first five tips for designing audio interactions for AI glasses. Now, go learn through building. Um, for more details on how to build these audio experiences, please check out our Leveraging AI for Apps and Experiences session. And for details on how to design for display glasses, watch our Design Best Practices for AI Glasses talk as well. And as you're building, let's make sure to be responsible with this new technology and consider comfort in design. For our latest details on design best practices, you can go to this URL. We are consistently conducting new research in this space, and we will continue to update this website as we learn more. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Yeah, thank you.